Hi, I'm Owen Vallis, professor of music technology at California Institute of the Arts. We're going to take a look at blocks in the new Reactor 6. In this video, we're going to take a look at two of the new filters that are part of the block system. Let's start by taking a look at the Paul filter. I'm going to go ahead and reload this patch, which we can do by going up to the menu here and just clicking on our recent files. This new view again shows us our structure down here in the bottom, and we can see how the Paul filter is taking the output from our filter here, this multi wave oscillator, and we're also controlling the key tracking using the pitch of our sequencer. Up here in the panel view, the Paul filter is very simple. We have a cutoff, a resonance, input for frequency modulation the ability to add keyboard tracking, which again is as you play the keyboard, the cutoff filter tracks where you are in the keyboard. So as I play higher than middle C, the cutoff should move up with me. And as I play below middle C, it should close down a little bit. I also have the ability to select different filter modes. These change how aggressive the filter is, how much of the frequencies above the cutoff it's removing or attenuating. Technically, the LP4 or low pass 4 is 24 decibels per octave, while low pass 1 is 6 decibels per octave. Perceptually though, we just hear that the darkening or removal of the frequencies are much more pronounced with the low pass 4 setting. The last thing I wanted to show was this little bass clef. The bass clef enables or disables a mode that tries to preserve the amount of bass even as you increase the resonance. Typically in classic filters, when you increase the resonance, it takes a very, very tiny amount of the frequencies right around your cutoff and boosts them. Boosting this actually pushes down the entire signal and can lead to a loss in bass. Sometimes this is very desirable and greatly exaggerates the resonance at the cutoff. But modern filters have the ability to preserve some of that low end. In fact, I'm going to create an entire new block from scratch so that we can go ahead and hear just what this filter sounds like. I'm going to go here and say new block. I'm going to go into the blocks themselves and say modern and grab the Paul filter. And let's just use the bento box oscillator. Let's control the pitch from the keyboard. Let's go over to the interface here and select something more like a sawtooth. So we have lots of harmonics and pass that in to our filter. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume up. Great. We can hear that the filter removed the frequencies. I'm going to increase the resonance and sweep it back up. And we can hear how there's that pronounced resonance where right around the cutoff, the sound of that particular frequency is very pronounced with respect to the other frequencies. I'm going to continue to increase the resonance to exaggerate this even more. Turning on the bass clef should allow us to preserve some of the bass frequencies in our sound. So we can hear from that, that as I turn on and off that bass clef, essentially the bottom end of the sound disappears or comes back, but the resonance stays pronounced. Versus. Let's try a different filter and see how that sounds. The other one we were previously looking at is in this driver section. We'll take our input here. And we'll send the output directly to the speakers. So we've bypassed our previous filter and volume control here. To make things easier to see, I'm going to switch to our top and bottom split view. I'm going to switch 
the top panel and the structure view below. And I'm going to rearrange a few things. I'm going to turn back up the volume, but turn down this frequency, which is essentially our cutoff. So we can hear that it's a low pass filter. If I increase the resonance, I'm going to turn down distortion, turn down color. And let's turn down the output so we make sure we don't clip. So we can hear we have that same resonant sound, although a very different character from the previous filter. This time, I'm going to increase the distortion amount. And we can hear how the filter is beginning to have a gritty quality to it. Let's increase the color and see how that further changes the sound. This driver effect essentially is a low pass filter coupled with a saturation circuit. Similar to how when we were looking at the Monarch filter, there was the ability to provide increased feedback and get these sort of crunchy sounds. This is very good at producing crunchy distorted sounds with modulation inputs. I'm going to open up the sequencer blocks patch that we previously had and let's play around with that and hear very clearly what these distortion sounds can be. Go up here again to the top left, open up our sequencer. I'm going to close the structure view here so we can see more of the panel. And let's start playing. So here's our Paul filter. We have the bass uh, turned on, so this preserves the bass. And let's increase our resonance on the driver. So we can hear how that filter can become very gritty very quickly. Really quickly before we finish up here, I want to show just a quick overview of the remainder of the modules that we haven't really seen, but are related to everything we've already looked at. We have the utility modules, which basically extend to include single versions of this mixer, stereo uh, versions of the mixer. We have a way to mix our control voltage or modulation sources. We have a trigger input, which we haven't used because we used the gate from the node input. We've used both the delay and the reverb and all of the Monarch modules. We haven't looked at the comb filter, but the comb filter works very similar to the Paul, the driver, but it has this feedback zingy sound. In fact, I could add this really quickly so that we can hear this before we finish up. What I'm going to do is put this on the output so we can hear this over the entirety of the track. And I'm only going to take the left output for the moment. Again, going back to the panel, we now have our comb filter in here. Let me turn up the volume so we can hear that. I'm going to turn down some of the color. Let's turn up our output volume so we can hear more of that. So we can hear how the comb filter is very good for producing these kinds of zingy resonant sorts of sounds. And in fact, I highly recommend experimenting with modulating the parameters of the comb filter. We've already explored the driver. We've seen how we can do the clock divider. 
We've taken a look at our multi-wave oscillators here and the dual SKF or Salen key filter, as well as the majority of our modules here inside the bento box. Up next, we'll take a look at how we can jump inside of these blocks and begin to build our own pieces or our own blocks rather by swapping out pieces inside of core. Hopefully this will lead you to build your own blocks to augment the existing ones we've already seen. If you'd like to learn more about Reactor, join us on Cadenze.com. There we're going to go over how to build your own synths from scratch using Reactor Primary.